The story of this porridge is so much more than food. It leads us to a king who stated the first laws in history, a festival where it was offered to the gods, and freedom. Will we be able to recreate the true flavors of this divine porridge? Watch to find out and hit the link in the description to try the recipe yourself. Humans have been cooking since fire was invented. But it was the Sumerians that invented professional cooking. Not to eat better, but to serve better. The Sumerians believed they were created by the gods to serve them. And the way to serve them was to offer food and drink four times daily. But one does not simply put food on the table of gods. The Muhaldim had to prepare, cook and serve the food with care. And while you may think of porridge as baby food or a necessary evil if you're trying to be healthy, the Sumerians and their gods thought highly of it, especially one type of porridge called zizga. The Sumerians relied solely on artificial watering of their crops, and their inventions of irrigation canals and the plow may be the reason you and I live in the world we do today. Because the food surplus the Sumerians created by these inventions led to the first cities, laws, schools and civilization itself. This would probably never have happened if it wasn't for hordium vulgare, or barley as we call it. Barley accounted for more than 90% of the crop yields in Sumer. It stood against the ferociously hot sun and salinity in the soil much better than wheat could. And barley was commonly used to make porridge. But if barley was like bronze, wheat was like gold, and Zizga was a golden porridge. In the 24th century BC, a king called Urukagina served Zizga to the city gods of Lagash. Ningirsu, the god of agriculture, and Inanna, the goddess of love. Urukagina had led a successful revolution to usurp the throne from a dictator. And although Urukagina also possessed absolute power, he gave it to the people. Urukagina wrote the first laws in history and exempted widows and orphans from taxes, made sure rich people had to pay in silver when buying from the poor, and guaranteed citizens' funeral expenses by ensuring enough food and drink offerings were put in their graves before journeying to the afterlife. During Urukagina's reign, the word amargi, or freedom as it means, was recorded for the first time in history. But giving freedom to the masses meant he had to take away wealth and power from the nobility who now wanted their king dead. Urukagina knew this and that's why he offered Zizga to the gods in hope of getting divine favor and protection. Do you think it worked? Make your guess now, and I'll let you know after we've made the zizga. Ziz means emmer, an ancient wheat with less gluten than common wheat. Ga stands for sour milk, but sour milk in Sumer wasn't spoiled milk. It basically meant yogurt. Some scholars believe that everybody in those days was lactose intolerant, so no one would have been able to drink fresh milk except for gods and babies. But when fresh milk is allowed to ferment in a controlled environment, it can be turned into yogurt, among other things. And during that process, most of the lactose is broken down. We also know that the emmer wheat in Zizga was not turned into flour. Instead, the grains were boiled. But boiled grains with yogurt sound a little simple to be served on the table of gods. After more research, I found that another common ingredient in Sumerian porridge was oil. And here's where it gets interesting. Because modern day Assyrians eat something almost identical to Zizga when the oil is added. Assyrians are one of the few people belonging to a culture that lived side by side with the Sumerians. And recreating ancient dishes sometimes requires bouncing back and forth in time, validating ancient sources against what people in similar areas and cultures eat today. And that's what I've been doing since 2019 for my upcoming cookbook Table of Gods, which is inspired by the world's oldest recipes. On the link in the description, you can get on the waiting list and also get the recipe for Zizga. Being an Assyrian myself, boiled wheat grains with yogurt and a mixture of oil and mint is something I've eaten since I was a child. The flavors of the nutty wheat grains combined with the sourness of the yogurt and deep yet fresh flavors of the oil and mint mixture is so simple yet complex. We don't call it zizga, but since Sumerian was an isolated language, it wouldn't make sense anyway. We call it gabula. The only ingredient in gabula that's missing from the Sumerian porridge sources is the mint. But mint is indigenous to ancient Mesopotamia. And in the world's oldest recipes, it's commonly used to enhance flavors of stews and maybe even porridges. Therefore, it's not impossible that Urukagina added mint to the zizga he offered to the gods. 
Modern day Assyrians served this dish by making a crater of the boiled wheat grains, pouring the yogurt into it, and lastly adding the heated mint and oil mixture. While we never know how zizga looked like, you have to agree that this porridge seems mysterious and worthy of being served at the table of gods. While this hopefully isn't my last supper, it could have been for Urukagina. The king had become a living legend for giving Amargi freedom to his people. But Urukagina's soldiers belonged to the nobility he took power away from. So when a king called Lugal Zagezi marched on Lagash, Urukagina's soldiers abandoned him. Urukagina disappeared from history, but we remember him as the first ruler who fought for human rights, justice and freedom. And in his honor, I'm going to eat my zizga, because offering it to the gods doesn't seem to help anyway. Hit the like button, subscribe, and click the link in the description to get this recipe.